hydrohalogenation is a kind of addition reaction. Your substrate is an alkene, and your reagent is a halo acid, HCl, HBr, or HI. And the product is going to be a Markovnikov alkyl halide. So if I have 3,4-dimethylpent-2-ene as my substrate and hydrochloric acid as my reagent, I will get a racemic mixture. 50% of each of these enantiomers. In other words, 50% of the R isomer here and 50% of the S isomer here. Let's look at the mechanism to find out why. My first step, the pi bond of the alkene acts as a base and takes the proton from the acid. This produces a chloride ion. Now the proton could have added in this position of the alkene or in this position. It has to replace the pi bond on one of them but it's going to specifically add to the one on the right because that gives us a tertiary carbocation. The carbocation you form in this step is always going to be the more substituted or more stable one. Now rearrangement can be an issue too, but in this case we're already tertiary and so we probably aren't going to rearrange because there's no resonance stabilization to be had. In the next step, the chlorine attacks, or sorry, the chloride ion attacks, and it can attack above the plane of the carbocation, which gives us the R isomer with the chlorine on the wedge, or it can attack below the plane, giving us the S isomer with the chlorine on a dash. So we have nucleophilic attack on the carbocation, yielding this pair of outcomes. Again, because the carbocation is planar, and the nucleophile can attack from above the plane or below the plane. So in this case, the R isomer was formed from nucleophilic attack from above the plane, and the S isomer was formed from nucleophilic attack below the plane. As far as regiochemistry goes, the nucleophile attacks on the more substituted position of the alkene, or of the carbocation. That's because during the proton transfer step, the carbocation that forms is going to be the more stable one, the more substituted one. Here's an exercise for you. Draw the mechanism and the outcomes for this hydrohalogenation reaction, where we have 3-methyl-but-1-ene reacting with hydrobromic acid. Pause your video draw the mechanism and the outcomes, then resume to compare your answer with mine. So our first step, proton transfer. This produces a bromide ion from the acid, and we also get a carbocation. And given a choice between having the hydrogen add here to give us a secondary carbocation or having the hydrogen add here to give us a primary carbocation, it's going to go secondary. So we've got our secondary carbocation here. We can do a 1,2 methide or 1,2 hydride shift to get a tertiary carbocation.
So rearrangement will happen if it's going to give you a more substituted carbocation. And then the nucleophile, the bromide, is going to attack that carbocation. So it turns out it doesn't matter what side the um, bromide adds on, whether it's above the plane of the carbocation or below, because we don't produce a chirality center. Did you get the same outcome? Congratulations, if so. Be honest, though. Did you try to do nucleophilic attack without doing the rearrangement? Then you would have gotten a mixture of R and S, 2-bromo, 3-methylbutane. You would have made a chirality center. But the rearrangement product is the major product because it goes through a more stable carbocation intermediate.